in the play tab there is a section called animation preview and as you can imagine um, it creates a little preview of the animation that you have and so in order to show that off I'm just going to create a little animation for you so I'm going to load up this box and scale it and then from the camera view oops, pull back and there's the box so I'm just going to create an animation that's 60 frames long that makes the box rotate. So there it is. So in the play tab, when you have animation preview selected, you have a bunch of options here. The first option describes the bit depth that you want to record it at. 24 bit color obviously allows for colored objects to be shown, but if you pick 8 bit grayscale, you save a lot on uh, video memory and uh, since this is just an OpenGL preview uh, you don't really care about colors all that much so that's a nice option to have and it will allow you to fit more uh, of the preview into video memory into RAM, sorry, uh, and allow you to see more of the scene. The size um, defaults usually to active camera but there are a bunch of other options. World view um, allows you to set it to the pixel resolution of the current world view. So if I make this a little bit narrower you can see that it's changing that value there. If I bring it, uh, this up a little bit it doesn't immediately change that vertical value but it, um, when you hover over it, it, it it refreshes that. So that's that resolution and you can obviously choose to do percentages of that as well. The other view is active camera view. And so because um, my current camera here in output is set to VGA here in the preview, um, the target size is set to 640 by 480. If I were to change that to say 1280 by 720, when I go in here it'll be 1280 by 720. The output you can just have to world view here and it won't save to any file, it'll just play here in the world view or you can save it to an AVI file. So I have my settings set up the way I like them. I'm just going to scale this a little bit and I'm just going to create a new preview. So it's recording the preview to the settings that I have here. and it will automatically play it once it's done. So here it is, the grayscale version. I have smoothing on to sublevel sample of two. Pre-rolls set to zero um, is good for things like particles um, and dynam sim dynamic simulations, but not really, if you're not using anything like that, you should usually turn that off. Um, fit to worldview, uh, just makes it so that it scales. As I scale this it'll make it bigger or smaller. Uh, record audio is um, whether or not you want the audio to play. It's usually uh, a setting that is better with AVI. Sometimes you want the audio to record, sometimes you don't. So um, once you have a preview playing, um, you can't, as I, uh, let's say I create a keyframe and then I move that keyframe, it's not going to automatically update the preview, the preview is set in video memory, but if I deactivate the preview, you can see the changes that I made in my motion curve, but at any given time I can toggle it back and forth to see the old animation overlaid over the top of the new animation change that I made. So that's a really helpful tool. You can keep that uh, kind of in a buffer in the background as you're animating so if you want to kind of go back and forth and visually instantly see the changes that you've made so that's a really nice thing and when you absolutely know you don't want that anymore you can just press clear and it'll clear that out. Um, saving to AVI file is um, 
bring up brings up these other options. Um, this is where I mentioned the recording the audio, but you can also have it if if you know the codec that you saved it at and it works for you, you can toggle this on and yeah, it will automatically save to that codec settings and this one will automatically override the existing file without asking you if you want to override it or not. Another cool feature is you can actually tag the outputted um, AVI file with different things. Um, here I put a label. So if you say you're working on shot 10, shot 10, you can then, um, yeah, shot 10. So and then you can say, well, I want a time code in there and frames, and I don't care about frames per second. So, but these are just all different options out there. So here you can say where it's going to save to, just for ease sake I'm going to save it right to my desktop and call it spinning box and I'm going to click record preview and here it asks me what codec to use I usually almost always do uncompressed just because um, it makes it easier to scrub back and forth in uh, and if I want to show it to other people I can use another codec compressor to um, compress that so it's creating the file now. And here in my uh, Anim Player program that I use, it's loading up the AVI. And I can scrub around and you can see on the bottom left it's shot 10. You can see the frame on frame 40. It's embedded that into the AVI itself. And then here you can see the time code. So it's 24 frames a second. So frame 37 is 1 second and 13 frames. So you can actually hand that to your to the person editing your production so that as a stand-in and they can give you feedback or your client say for instance and they can say on frame uh, 28 it looks awful I want you to change it and you'll know exactly what they mean. So that's a sort of neat little feature that is in there. Um, other than that, I think everything's pretty self-explanatory. Um, again, the relationship between uh, the world view and the view size is there. Sometimes that's a little confusing, but uh, you just need to. The most important thing is to look at the output size and make sure that you have what you want. Um, you can make custom resolutions. You can choose from the standard presets, 640 by 480. Um, 320 by 240, things like that. So hopefully that's uh, allowed you to have a greater understanding of what Animation Preview does. And um, if you have any questions, please let me know on the forums and I can clarify this um, instructional video probably with another addendum. Thank you.